I was bullied because for some reason this person didn't like me. There was violence and there was more bullying, like I got bullied. In 2004, Hollickwood Primary in North London was in special measures. They did quite bad stuff, like they spat in my drink and called me bad names. Bullying behaviour was a big issue. He started, like, punching me and kicking me and um, just get, gathered all his friends. Now Hollickwood has changed dramatically. With new head teacher Chris Ryan at the helm, Behaviour was judged to be outstanding when the school came out of special measures a year later. This programme shows how Hollickwood is using PSHE to help tackle bullying behaviour. The two approaches we have here, there's, there's the reactive and the preventive approach to dealing with bullying. Um, now, the reactive, we've got our rules, our consequences which we've all agreed to, I mean, all staff who, who work here agree to it, all children agree to it, and parents. Um, so that's our reactive. Then we've got our preventive. Now our preventive is done through SEAL, through other PSHE, circle times, and assemblies. Assembly is used to introduce and link together PSHE and circle time throughout the school around a weekly theme. The themes are based on SEAL, the government's social and emotional aspect of learning program. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. The whole program, it teaches children to empathize with someone else and to be able to understand how someone else might be feeling and then how to react to those feelings. Each of the, the units within SEAL, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about looking at others and see how they feel and, and looking at your own feelings and, and, and um, addressing how, how you feel. This morning's assembly, we're talking about how we stop bullying at Hollywood School. Chris Ryan's first concern is to ensure everyone understands what bullying is after a parent recently reported a bullying incident. What is bullying? The type of... Um, bullying that they thought was taking place wasn't actually bullying, it was aggressive play. Um, and the, the definition was wrong. Now, it got me thinking, is the definition not clear from the child's point of view, or is this the parent's point of view where the definition isn't clear? So we firstly met, you know, as, as a group of staff and said, look, we've got a little problem here. I think there's still some children who don't understand what bullying really is. Bullying is something when somebody um, hits you or does something nasty to you over and over again. Bullying is someone hits you and they hurt your feelings um, every single day and they never stop. It's an ongoing and repeated thing and it, if people hurt you every day, you have to tell the teacher. When he's your age, John Westmore is deputy head and class teacher of year six. The bullying theme is continued in circle time. Maybe you will understand then how to change it and how to mend it. And maybe you're going to understand how people will behave because when they feel something, it makes them behave in a special way. The children previously, if there had been an instance of bullying, everybody's very, very clear that these are the rules that must not be broken. Everybody's aware that the victim must be supported. Everybody's aware that bullies are doing something wrong. But perhaps they weren't aware that bullies aren't monsters, aren't demons. Perhaps they weren't aware that actually bullies are... We're all capable of bu being bullies ourselves, of being involved in it. And that each and every person involved in the situation has an emotional response and an emotional motivation. And trying to draw that out and tease that out and increasingly focusing the children on, it was not so much, no, you shouldn't have done that, but why? What did it make you feel like? How do you think that person felt? So we're developing not just a sympathetic understanding, but an empathetic. And I think there's a real, real clue. If you can imagine what it's like to be somebody else, half the things you would do would change. Tell the person next to you what you feel, if you have seen now, and you've been asked about football, can you make it up with it? Thank you very much.
Yeah. You'd have to do something quite special, and if you did know them and you were their friends, then you'd probably know what you could do. Who would like to share them with us? How you think you might feel, Rory? I'd feel powerless. One thing that really, really amazes me is the way in which the children are so articulate about the way, about their emotions, the way they can express them, the way they understand other people's emotions, in a way that I really didn't have at their age. Year six have created their own anti-bullying interactive presentation, which looks at the feelings of those involved in bullying. Fantastic, that's very good. Now we're very lucky this afternoon because we're going to carry on the work we've been doing about bullying with a presentation from some children in year six. Explain what you did first. We, we went outside and we um, took pictures and then we, we took them onto the computer and made a slideshow. And um, there's like five characters in it. Yeah. And uh, I think, and there's uh, four of them are bullies and one's a victim of the bullying. Can you tell who the bullies are? Oh. You think you can? Okay, Why do you, who do you think's the bullies in that picture? Me. Yeah. Them. Why do you think they're the bullies? Because it looks like they're talking about him and everyone else is playing. Okay, right. Uh, I thought it was very useful. I thought it was particularly useful because older children are showing younger children what they've actually done, so they're sharing their ideas. I think one of the particularly useful things also is the fact that they're discussing the feelings, not just of the victim, but of actually everybody who's involved. What did the pupils who created this gain from the experience? It was fun and it's like, it's like because we've done it ourselves, so we like get to learn how it would actually feel because we get to feel inside of us how the victim would feel and how the person um, who was bullying would feel. Being left out is probably a more common type of bullying because, because like, bullying isn't always so huge like some people put it out as. We didn't make it all violent because Sometimes bullying isn't really like with violence, sometimes it's just calling names or some stuff like that. So that's why we didn't do it. And maybe the little kids would think that it, bullying is just when you get hurt or there's violence in it. Maybe if you had like an older brother or sister and they're like bossing you about and stuff and then you like, like you'll feel powerless. And then to get that power back, you go to school and like bully someone. It's like, so then you feel like much happier, but, um, don't know how the other person's feeling. Like, if you bully someone, you might make think you look cool and all your friends think you're all good and stuff, but it's not really that good. What do you think they were feeling looking at those comments? Just take a, a 30 seconds and talk to the person sitting next to you. What do you think the bullies were actually feeling? OK, Chris, if you'd like to come and help this table, and Lily, if you'd like to help this table. They might have felt a bit worried because they might have told the teacher. I think they were quite selfish, and I don't think we should feel sympathetic for them. Well, I thought it was interesting that they, when we were talking about the feelings of the bullies, they recognised them straight away. They were kind of, there was a buzz around the classroom that, you know, oh, yes, they feel powerful, it makes them feel, you know, great and gives them that sense of, you know, I'm good at something, even if it is making somebody else feel horrible. Hasin's class held a meeting with their teacher. All the children had ideas about what happened. There was a lot of discussion and debate. Most people in the groups that I went round seemed to think that telling the bullies about the feelings of the victim actually could make an impact on them. The other thing I think that's really important that this reinforces is that everybody has those feelings. You know, you don't, it isn't just that person over there that has these feelings of being upset about this, that or the other or wanting to get their own back on somebody. You know, absolutely all of us do have them. Uh, and it's the way we deal with them that makes the difference. Bullies are ordinary people, they're not people who just like like monsters and they're out there to get you on. Sometimes they might just be doing it for the fun of it or maybe something's going on at home and they're taking it out on other children. They might bully because they're insecure of themselves or they've been bullied. I think bullies would probably have um, feelings inside them that they, they, that they take out with aggression on other children. To help potential bullies manage their emotions, all pupils are encouraged to use exercises known as calming tricks. 
they are just amazing because if they're in a temper, you can go up to any child in the school, children that aren't in my class, in the playground, I say, right, do your calming trick before you say anything about what's happened. And they'll start to take some deep breaths or they'll start to count to 10 straight away. And that immediately then stops whatever's been happening. But the main block to tackling bullying is persuading children to tell. It's not a question of saying to children, you must tell us. There you are, easy, I've told you. Why didn't you come and tell me? It's practice. Practice being able to talk about these things. Practice being able to tell people. Practice watching other people. You've seen it happen before. Somebody spoke, did it work? Did it help them? So it's a question of building these, if you want to build the skills and the ability of children to respond, it's not just a question of telling them that's what you do. And it won't just go away, this fear of, of actually talking to somebody about it. It'll only start to go away when it becomes a skill that's well practiced and well honed. They learn the little motto of T-E-L-L, tell, and all, all of those kind of things when they're very young, so that it becomes second nature to them. You know, they're not telling a tale about one-off incidents. They've actually spotted that that person is actually very sad and unhappy a lot of the time, and they need to speak to somebody about it. If we saw someone bullied, we would, like, straight away go and tell the teacher or tell them to stop and, like, arrange one of those, like, make him a buddy or just, like, they can talk about what's, what's happening and how the how the people, person who's getting bullied can feels and how the other and the um, people who are bullying him feel. I didn't really know that much about bullying before and I wouldn't have probably spotted what it was. I would have probably thought that, that they're just messing around or something. But if I did see bullying now, I'd probably tell as well because cause it's, it's quite upsetting for people. I thought bullying was just hitting and punching and um, that's, um, but now I realise more, I would just go up um, to tell them, to go and tell a teacher, or I would do it for them. So can the school stamp out bullying completely? If everybody is using it in their classrooms on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, all the time, visiting these themes again and again and again, they arrive in our nursery at age three, they leave at age 11, that's eight years of people consistently and constantly talking about these things and children exploring these things. So it becomes a proper language for them. There's an emotional side now to their le learning that didn't exist before. It's not, oh, I feel sad. There may be many layers of feeling that they become aware of and they're able then to talk to one another in that way. There's a, a common parlance. Because of that, the bully is less likely to thrive. You can't exclude it. But the, the environment is not there for them to thrive. It's not a, a place that is rich and fertile for bullies to exist within. I think there's always going to be at least, like, a bit of bullying in school, but it, it gradually will get better if we work on it. I know more now because um, people listen to, to me more now about things as well. And I've probably got conf more confidence. To accompany this programme, there is a pupil resource programme designed for use in the classroom. Called Beat Bullying, it features Hollickwood Primary's anti-bullying work and can be downloaded via the Teachers TV website.